Okay, here we're going to be looking at a recording of our inventory right down here for the lower cost of market. And we're going to be applying this lower cost of market rule here for our ending inventory here. And uh, just to go over it briefly here, we have uh, our ending inventory here. We're going to have these items here. We're going to have a cost here on those items. That's what we're costing this inventory out. But then we have to come up with our lower cost of market here. And then we're going to come up with a designated market value here for this ending inventory. And we do that simply by uh, setting a replacement cost on each of these items here and this is for the, our market here and we have on our ceiling amount here and then we have our floor amount here and what we're going to do for our, our designated market value is simply find the mid am middle amount here between the uh, these three uh, costs that we have our replacement costs our ceiling and our floor so just looking at item a here for example we have a ceiling amount here of 60,000 uh, that would be the high amount here and then we have a replacement cost here of 44,000 the low amount so then the middle amount here would be $52,000 and that's what we'd have as our designated market value here so we go through each of these items here and find the middle amount here for this uh, for our market uh, uh, values here that we have our cost, ceiling, and floor. And then what we do here is we compare this uh, market value or our designated market value here that we've determined. We determ uh, de compare that with the cost and what we would do in this case for the lower cost of market we take the lower amount here between the cost and the designated market value and then we're going to assign that as our final inventory value here. The the lower amount between the market and our cost. And in this, just for this example, we're coming up with our final inventory here at $175,000. And had, and based on our cost, what we're recording at here at cost, it had a value here of $207,500. So we have to reduce our inventory here to the lower cost of market valuation here. Reduce it from $207,500 to $175,000. And the difference between those amounts here is $32,000. $500. So we're going to revalue our inventory or write it down here by that amount here, $32,500, because the final inventory value here is less than what we had recorded it here at cost. So we have two methods of doing this, and we're going to be looking at this, the end of, pe end of period inventory adjustment, again, for this lower cost of market here. We have either the direct market a method here or the indirect method. So let's just start with our direct method here. This is where we substitute the lower cost of market when value evaluating our inventory here and it does not report a loss here in the income statement rather we charge directly to the cost of goods sold and again we're assuming that we have a perpetual invent we've been using this perpetual inventory system and uh, we've been charging it off against our cost here for the year on this inventory and what we would do here is we're going to, uh, for this, again, the direct method here, we got our balance sheet account here and our income statement account here. So what we have to do is we have to reduce this inventory here to the lower cost of market. So remember, we had $207,500 here in the cost of our inventory, and it's now worth here using the lower cost of market valuation $175,000. So we have to reduce it here, and we do that here by crediting our inventory account here for $32,500. Now, what in the direct method here, this is where it affects our cost of goods sold here on our income statement. So uh, because we've written this inventory down here by $32,500, we have to increase our cost of goods sold for the period here. It has to go someplace here. So we would debit or increase our cost of goods sold here for $32,500 because uh, we've not been charging enough here to our cost of goods sold on our on our inventory for the period. And we have to account for our ending inventory here of the change here of rate down of $32,500. So it goes directly to the cost of goods sold here. So we would increase our cost of goods sold here from 300000 up to 300 $32,500. Now remember, this is we're assuming we're using this perpetual inventory method. Now let's go down and look at this the, the indirect method or the allowance method here. Now, allowance method. This does not change the cost of goods sold amount. It establishes a separate contra asset account, but it raises the problem here of how to dispose of the balance in this allowance account in the following period. And the option usually is to leave this account on the books and adjust the account 
at uh, the account here at the next the year end here. Whenever you have to make your year end adjustment or your end of period adjustment, you just adjust your allowance account. So let's go look at this. Again, the indirect method here, the allowance account. What we set up was this allowance here to reduce our inventory. And remember here, we have to reduce it here by $32,500. It's a contra asset account here on our balance sheet. So what in effect it does here, the $32,500 being a contra asset account just reduces our inventory account here. Uh, the debit amount we have at $207,500 by this setting up this allowance account on our balance sheet, it just effectively brings our inventory on our balance sheet down to $175,000. Now, using this, uh, the, uh, this allowance account, uh, the credit amount here of $32,500 goes to our income statement here. And this is where we recognize a loss here in this inventory de decline using this indirect method. So we debit our loss here on our income statement by $32,500. So you can see here the different, the direct method. What we did is we charged our cost of goods sold here account on our income statement. So we buried this uh, reduction or this devaluation or of our inventory here in our cost of goods sold here. So that would be um, buried in the cost of goods sold, it increases our cost of goods sold. Now, uh, with the indirect method, we recognize the loss here on our income statement. We increased it or we recognize the loss here. We're at, and with the indirect method here, the loss is recognized here, $32,500, but then our cost of goods sold would just remain here at $300,000. So we didn't affect here our cost of goods sold using this indirect method. Now let's just go up here and just look at a summary here of our gross profit on sales here. So for the direct method, we have our sales say at $500,000. And in this case, uh, we increased our cost of goods sold here from 300,000 up to uh, $332,500 here for that adjustment. So our difference here is our gross profit on sales, $167,500. Now in comparison here for our direct or our allowance method, again, sales revenue of 500,000. Now this here is our cost of goods sold. Uh, it remains here at $300,000 here for the indirect method. Uh, subtracting that here from our sales revenue, a gross profit here is at $200,000. Now this is where we recognize our loss here to do this market decline and our, for our final inventory account here of $32,500. Subtracting that from our gross profit, we end up uh, gross profit on sales, we enter a gross profit here on sales of $67,500. So either the direct method or the indirect method here, we end up with the same gross profit. It's just a matter of how we recognize the uh, change or reduction in our inventory. Direct method, charge it off directly to our cost of goods sold. Indirect method doesn't affect our cost of goods sold, but we recognize it here as a loss due to the market decline in the inventory.